people, and we are people here who are researching the um, access to banks throughout New Mexico towns and villages. And um, you know, what brought us all into this was the idea of a, a state bank. Um, and um, I want to I want to talk first about different kinds of um, banking institutions because we're not always really clear, and I'm not sure that I'm really clear on this. Charlie can, having been a banker, can speak to it better. But basically, a credit union is a co-op. They use the money of its members. They don't borrow money from other places, and they don't loan their money other places. So we have examples of them here in Santa Fe, Del Norte, Guadalupe, Permaculture, State Employees Credit Union, New Mexico Federal Educators Credit Union, and there's more, I'm sure. Um, there are community banks, which is uh, what we are interested in having people move their monies to. And there's two kinds of community banks, or three kinds. Um, uh, one that is uh, chartered in the states, that has a charter with the state of New Mexico, and funding is obtained within the state of its charter. An example of that bank would be Los Alamos National Bank. Then there's a community bank um, with a national charter, and an example of that would be the first national bank of uh, Santa Fe. And um, actually, uh, Century Bank is also a national bank. It has a national charter. And funding can be attained at, uh, nationally, but it's not obtained globally. Um, and chartered, they are named for here, the Bank of Al Albuquerque actually is based in Oklahoma. So that's kind of a slow of hand. I'm not sure what that means. But a public bank, a public bank is a bank that is owned, operated by, and serving a state, a county, or a city. So, for instance, if we were to have public banking in New Mexico, it could be a state bank of New Mexico. Um, it could be a county of Santa Fe Bank. It could be a city of Santa Fe Bank. Um, and uh, they are owned and operated as by the state or the county or the city. They're not um, privately owned. So the Bank of North Dakota is our inspiring example, and they have a pretty interesting history that's um, wise for us to look at. I'd like to recognize that David, our webmaster, is here. He has done our webpage, and there's tons of information that he's loaded onto our webpage um, about the Bank of North Dakota and public banking and all kinds of information to help you learn better than what I can teach you. But uh, the Bank of North Dakota is owned and operated by the state of North Dakota. Imagine that. Well, there's things that you might worry about if a state owns uh, a bank, but there are also benefits. In North Dakota, it has oversight by three um, publicly elected um, bodies of government. One is the Industrial Commission, which um, is headed by the governor. The Attorney General's Office, which I would hope would keep it straight or legal in what they do, and the Commissioner of Agriculture. And um, the Bank of North Dakota wasn't born yesterday. It's 97 years old. It was founded in 1915. And um, it took over an old building, and that's what it looked like when it first started. Um, and the reason it started was because back then, North Dakota was the breadbasket. But guess what? North Dakota farmers were controlled by big money, even back then, by the corporations. And uh, grain dealers outside of North Dakota suppressed grain prices. They controlled the grain elevators. Outside farm suppliers increased their prices. And uh, big banks, interest rates on farm loans uh, climbed very high. Uh, in 1915, the Sioux Line was the Sue's line, First National Bank and the Apples control really a lot. And actually, when they talk about corruption, they talk about the Twin Cities. We don't usually think about Twin Cities as being big, big money, but that's what they were back then. 
Um, Eastern owned trains charged excessive shipping fees, which made it all really hard for the farmers. Uh, around that time, oil you know, was also being pumped and started, but it wasn't playing such a major role back then. Um, the two primary um, income producers for North Dakota are oil and um, farming. So the winds of change began with the populist movement and the progressive movement in the early 1900s. But it didn't really gain success um, for a state bank until the Nonpartisan League was founded. And there's a member of the Nonpartisan League, and they're just farmers, and they were not going to be Republicans, they weren't going to be Democrats, they were going to be issue oriented, which is what we are. We are issue oriented and we are nonpartisan. Um, and they were able to sweep into law, and act in law, the creation uh, in 1915 of the Bank of North Dakota and the North Dakota Mill and Elevator Association. So it was owned by the state. So that liberated them from a lot of the problems that they've been experiencing with big money. However, just because you can enact a law doesn't mean that things are going to be okay, you know, because politics has always been politics. And the conservatives fought the implementation of the legislation. However, they soon gained power at the legislature, and once they were there, they realized, hmm, this isn't such a bad thing. We can make money off of it. Um, so, what they say in North Dakota is that people had to lose before they could win, and that's important to keep in mind um, in our strategy. Um, North Dakotans have won big. They have been in the black ink, they went sailed right through the depression that we're all still experiencing. They've had, for the last eight years, continuous record profit, um, standard and poor's credit rating, A minus to A1 plus. Um, they have $5.3 billion in assets and they're growing. And their return on investments is 17.6%, which actually compares with our, um, what Mexico is getting by investing in the global banks. Um, uh, the Bank of North Dakota has a mission, and that was enabled in the legislation, and that is agriculture, commerce, and industry. So if we were going to have a Bank of New Mexico, we would have to have a mission. And um, it's important to understand that the purpose of the Bank of North Dakota is doing business for North Dakotans. Um, they only loan to people in North Dakota or to those where the benefits will flow very clearly and directly to North Dakotans. So maybe sometimes they um, make loans that benefit um, soldiers and military people. Um, they do two kinds of loans. They do direct loans, primarily real estate financing for agriculture and ranches, uh, affordable housing for ranchers, and um, they purchase they purchase bank stocks for a bank holding company. And the other thing they do is student loans. Um, they were until recently administering federal um, student loans, but then there was some kind of funky thing with that that the federal government said a bank can't hold federal funds. So um, they do uh, their own student loans and they have the highest rate of students paying back their loans in the nation. They also do indirect loans to any qualified North Dakota financial institution like banks, savings and loans, credit unions, farm credit services, and that is, the legis that is the kind of legislation that um, Representative Brian Eagle was uh, sponsoring in the, in the past years. Uh, get a state bank to loan money to local community banks and credit unions who would then have more available credit to loan to the people. Um, it's also, they, uh, municipalities like towns, villages, and cities use the Bank of North Dakota as their bank. So they're reinvesting back in. Um, they 
have a Rebuilders Loan pro Program. They had a terrible flood in North Dakota, and they have helped um, people rebuild and reclaim their land and their housing along the flood. Um, they have an affordable housing incentive fund project. Um, you know, they're based on oil, and they have, I know this because my son lives in Carlsbad, he's a wildland firefighter there, and he pays $800 a month for a little two-room apartment, and the reason for that is real estate is very expensive in Carlsbad because of the oil industry and all the oil workers that are there. So they fund housing to make it affordable for people to live in North Dakota in oil pumping areas. Um, so I mentioned those others. But North Dakota's economy base is more limited than New Mexico's economy base. Um, they are basically based on farming, ranching, and oil. That's it. And it makes them vulnerable. And that's what made them vulnerable back in 1915, and that was why they needed to get a state bank. Um, but back in 1915, you know, they, they experienced some serious troubles with uh, big banks not wanting, to, uh, not wanting them to establish a state bank, and there was big money that bought. And that's something that's probably going to ha happen with us, and that's why we need to take our time to really look at what we're doing and build consensus. North Dakota is fourth in national oil production. New Mexico is fifth. But did you know that in 2011, the Bank of North Dakota generated more income for North Dakota than oil did? So that ain't no slouch, right? So what's North Dakota got that New Mexico doesn't? It's got credit. You know, and it's got, which creates jobs, which creates a whole self-sustaining economy. Right now, we don't have access to credit in New Mexico. So, North Dakota has 3.3% unemployment. New Mexico's got 6.6% unemployment. Um, income inequality is not exactly right. Uh, because now we're the first <laughs> in the nation for being the worst for income inequality and there's just some playing around with that. But North Dakota is like way down at the bottom, you know, for income inequality. Everybody's a lot more equal in North Dakota. Um, the Bank of North Dakota invests in North Dakota. It invests in new businesses, new farms, affordable housing, and more college students. And they have an educational outreach program to reach out to students and parents to educate them uh, about the benefits of college uh, for their students and for the state to have college educated students. So it invests in its people, but it's also when it's investing in its people, it's growing its own assets. It's a fee, you know, it's a, what do you want to, it's like one of those things where a closed loop, that's what it is. And um, it just keeps feeding and it just keeps growing. Its rate of uh, growth is very good. So New Mexico's big economy, the largest income producer is from our mineral wealth. Our largest employer, employer is the federal government. And that is one fourth of all our jobs in the state. That's the labs, the military, and um, <coughs> what else? There's another big category of, oh, federal government, BLM, uh, the service in those businesses or organizations. Next comes tourism, natural and cultural, and then ranching and farming after that. But a Bank of New Mexico, what would happen uh, if we invest and earn in New Mexico? We have, do you remember what North Dakota has in assets? By three billion? Look what we got. We got fifteen billion dollars in our permanent fund. What if instead is <coughs> Well, there's two of them actually, and I don't understand I had it explained, but I can't remember. One is um, the severance tax fund, and that's about 
four million. And um, then there is uh, 11 billion dollars in uh, the permanent fund, which is generated from oil and profits and whatever that you know we've got in in our economy that our government has. But are we investing in New Mexico, and how much of it are we investing in New Mexico? Not too much. Well, who currently controls that fund? Uh, good question. <coughs> um, is it, is the legislature it? controls it, um, but it's the um, Finance Authority, I think, has oh. some percent over it, and those, you know, that's a good question. But the government controls it. Well, State yeah. Wasn't there one member of that uh, commission who uh, recently, or not too far, long ago, was, uh, had to be uh, expelled for uh, doing something wrong? A politician? <laughs> no, a Portuguese. <laughs> right. So, uh, that's good questions. This is stuff we need to be learning about and understanding better. This is just a very superficial presentation. Um, but, you know, we could grow our jobs. We could grow our economy. Um, we could diversify it. We could fund small businesses. You know, solar, wind, geothermal energy. We could establish regional food production, education, of course. Who would we have to fight? You know, there are going to be people that aren't going to want us to have that, right? Because we've got big oil right here in New Mexico and gas. So our process for 2013 and 2014 is to educate, engage, and legislate. We're not assuming that we know the answers. Um, this is very much a grass. This is my anagram to help me. Educate, engage, legislate. And um, I really have a hard time with engage. I'm not sure what my problem is with that, because I like to engage. So educate, this is what we've been doing. We've been starting to research on the question you just had, and you had. That's, that's research, and that's stuff we have to be learning ourselves. It's not educating others until we know what we're talking about. And uh, reaching out to others, there's um, Representative Brian Eagle. He was here at our last town hall meeting and he was talking about his current thinking about public banking and how it might benefit New Mexico. Um, and engage. It means listening to learn even more um, and understanding other people's point of view. So, um, on the back of the table, there are some handouts for a workshop that you can go to, sponsored by the League of Women Voters, and it's about meeting with your legislators and lobbying, and the whole legislative process. I took the workshop maybe six or seven years ago. It was very good. It was a Saturday, very well spent. And I encourage you to do that. Then another thing we need to do is learn about the individual legislators, what their interests are, what their roles and responsibilities are, who their friends are in the legislature, and all that kind of stuff. So we need to learn also the legislative challenges, and that's what they don't teach you in this thing you'll go to on December 1st. And they primarily have to do with ethics and fairness issues, power struggles, and other realities that exist within the political process. We have to be, it's not like in that end up that they give you every year in the legislature what the legislative process is. Um, so this is what our thinking is, is that we are going to engage legislators in 2013 in this session. We're going to um, ask them what the banking issues are in their part of the state, what the employment issues are, what kind of things they think a state bank or a public bank could do for their part of the state, and we'll ask them what kind of challenges they see coming um, their way with the idea of a public bank in their part of the state. And, um, and that's what our process is going to be like in 2013. We're not going to go tell them we have a plan for you. We're going to meet them, talk to them, listen to them, and build a relationship with them. Um, how those that, of you that have been involved in the political process know that Santa Fe's have a reputation in the legislatures 
for being a little bee who, you know, and we have a chance to change that by listening to the ranchers and the farmers and um, the business people in Clovis and Raton and Portales and Farmington and other parts of the state. So, um, with this information, we will build knowledge and awareness and support for the concept of public banking, we think. Um, we want to develop respectful relationships with legislators. That's really important. And, um, and then we'll meet with the governor or the governor's aides. And we will learn what her concern is going to be. But, you know, the hope is that we would build a grass grassroots movement that you know, everybody would understand by the time we were done how we might benefit, how it might be good. It wouldn't just be Santa Fe is taking on the legislature. It uh, requires a lot of patience. It means finding common ground. Um, it means finding a win-win solution and being willing to lose so that the people may win. Um, we'll do meetings, web page, email, printed materials. We already have our first brochure for our new program called Banking on New Mexico. It's a statewide program. It's not just for Santa Fe. Um, we need to utilize radio and television. And then we'll be ready for legislation. And it might be a year or it might be two years. Depends on how much help we get and what we learn. So educate, engage, legislate. Deal. Uh, it's grassroots organizing. And um, I suggest you take the League of Women Voters Workshop. You can uh, sign up at the back table, or I'm going to do a small group. You can uh, get in my group with me at the, at, um, when I'm done. And um, thank you, and we need your help. And um, I would like to introduce Charlie Tanagas, who is going to organize us into brainstorming.